What are the odds I'm drinking out of a charmed glass? We all know the Lafayette Pioneer Cemetery was, shall we say, just a wee bit haunted. There might be a ghost there. There might be a couple. There might even be three. Whoa. Where's the evidence of that? Do we have any real evidence of it actually being haunted? We have the legends, which are spooky. Pretty substantial. They, they are based in some fact. Like, there is... Again, when I say some fact, it's it's basically like when a, a movie says based on real events, the event could be that the cop took a poop on a Tuesday, and that's where the basis of the true events were. How do we know if it's haunted? That's the thing. I'm a skeptic. I would like to believe that ghosts are real, that we have specters floating around. <laughs> Gonna drink your coffee. I don't know. Again, being a skeptic, I'm not totally sure. I'm not gonna sit here and say for sure or not, but what I have got today is a couple different paranormal investigation teams. I tried to reach out to one of them through Instagram. Didn't really work very well. Um, I sent them a like a little little paragraph, just being like, hey, can you fill me in on some of the shit? But uh, some of their clips I am going to be including today because I, I thought it was pretty, uh, pretty telling. Somebody there? And I also have another one from a relatively smaller YouTube channel, but they did the whole, they brought about the full Monty. They did all of it. They were at the, the cemetery. They had a ghost tube, which I'm not totally sure what a ghost tube is. Might just be like an app or something. I'm speaking with zero information, so take that with a grain of salt. But, you know, they, they didn't just say, oh my god, I felt a breeze on my butthole, and oh, it's a ghost. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is this? What is this? There's a, there's a, a wetness coming from my pants. I'll, uh, I'll have them linked down below so you guys can see as well as I'll have a little video just kind of... Maybe like that? Am I going to do it like that? I don't know. But as far as the hauntings go, there are more than just hauntings at the cemetery. There is a winery that, um, there is a story about a woman. Okay, it is Lena Elsie Emus. Um, she haunts the Argyle Winery, which is something that got put up in, uh, the early 1900s? Maybe mid-1900s? Um... But what the story is behind her is she committed uh, unaliving in her home in 1908. That's what it is. It's not formaldehyde. It was carbolic acid, which at the time they used this to treat like a skin infection, like topically. It wasn't really intended to ingest it, but it's what they did at the time. So at the Argyle Winery is where her home used to stand. And there have been... Um, some corroboration by the employees they said they have witnessed her they've seen like little little uh little wispy wispy ghost wispy ghost things i don't know but they have seen that they've had her knock things over they hear footsteps when no one's around which i've been in a big house with nobody in the house and i've heard like wood creaking and you know that 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 when you hear something that it just isn't supposed to be there and every hair on the back of your neck just shoots up and you're just like, I can't, I want to get out, I'm done. Um, and then there are uh, periods where people will hear wine glasses shatter and when it's gone to, or when they go to investigate it, there's, there's no glass anywhere. Which to me, that would freak me out unless someone's playing a trick with their phone and just like trying to troll the shit out of me like okay called in a psychic which i can't seem to find her name anywhere if somebody else does that'd be dope if you could leave that in the comments but you know i'm not gonna source my information from you guys uh but the psychic did say that she felt a presence now was it lena hard to say but the very least the psychic did say i don't know if it was a psychic or if it was a medium they felt a presence so again as a skeptic, I'm like, what does that mean? 
What does that mean? What is that? What is presence? Okay. Someone farted in the room and left. And you're like, oh, it smells like sulfur. Like, does that mean there's a demon in the room? No. Like, what? What is, what's the specifics of that? Can you tell us about the day Richard Marvel was hung? Saw. I feel like I'm, I'm kind of downplaying the haunting aspect. I'm just trying to be a realist with all of you and not sit here and fill you full of shit. Again, I want to be proven wrong. I think that'd be freaking awesome. If there was a ghost, if, or there were ghosts, like plural, ghosts, that'd be freaking sick! Lena is also buried in the Dundee Pioneer Cemetery, which I believe is just a few miles uh, away from the Lafayette Pioneer Cemetery. And people that have visited the Dundee Cemetery have claimed that they've seen a woman um, just kind of among the headstones. Which is creepy. Which, if we got pictures of it, That'd be pretty sick. I mean, that's sick. That's kind of that's kind of disrespectful to the dead. That would be interesting to to see. Honestly, I'd be like, okay, calm down. With that, I would like to see more, considering this is uh, one of the most haunted cemeteries in the Pacific Northwest. Like that is. That is a pretty big claim to fame to make, is that, you know, the Lafayette Pioneer Cemetery being the most haunted in the Pacific Northwest. But I'm also not going to, you know, behoove somebody of making that. Because, you know, when, when anxiety hits you and you're freaking out and you're scared, your brain will play tricks on you. I don't know why I snapped there. Your brain will play tricks on you and make you see things, make you hear things, make you feel things, smell things. It's weird how a lot of this stuff is like majorly psychological. I think it's, it's so cool that our brains can do that, but also simultaneously terrifying. Now these guys, while they're in the cemetery doing this ghost investigation, there are multiple periods um, during this video in which they hear things, or it, I shouldn't say that they, they specifically hear things. Ghost Tube, again, I'll probably pop up something explaining what Ghost Tube is, tells them, you know, it's like, oh, uh, I'll just play it. Here. Oh, she wanted me to come in. Did you talk to me? Whiskey? And I think that's really wild that... I don't know if it's like some kind of frequency, if, if, if it's got like a built-in EMF or something like that, but it's just really tense is probably the best way to put that, that it just, knowing that, you know, we have just apps now that can pick up this stuff and go, hey, yeah, this is somebody else like saying something because they're they're talking the whole time with this ghost tube up. And it doesn't register their voices as saying anything. So, for me, that's points that oh, okay, that this might be this might be a little ghosty goo. This might be a little ghosty goo. Might be sitting there trying to flabbergast you, make you a little nervous. It's incredibly compelling to see, like, that it's it's touching things. Like they have this they have this ball that lights up when it's being touched, and with nobody else around. Little kid sets it down. Nobody else is around. It starts lighting up. And it does this three times, which is insane that this ball, I would assume, is uh, motion activated. And with no one touching it, it's lighting up, freaking out. Tells me something's touching it. So, I'll leave it to you guys to decide if that's real or not. Now, after all those legends and all that information that I just shotgunned at you you're probably asking yourself okay chris all of that is really cool you got me engaged you got me listening with my little uh your your guys what happened well i'm glad you asked because 
I'm here to give you that answer. And I'm not going to baffle you with some buffoonery. I promise you that. I ain't going to do it. I'm going to tell you the facts straight up, up and down. So what actually happened? In 1885, Richard Ezekiel Marple moved to Lafayette, Oregon from Corvallis, Oregon with his mother, Anna Eliza Rizwa Marple, and his wife, Julia Ann Rizwa Grimes. It was Marple at the time. After everything that went down, she ended up remarrying and, and moving to a different city. I believe she stayed in Oregon, but I'm, uh, I, I can't quite remember, but we might, I might have it somewhere down here. Richard had a hard time finding steady work at the time to make ends meet and resorted to robbing to make money because he needed it for the family. I am not saying that your needs justify stealing from others. I think that is bullshit justification. Anybody that thinks that, I think you have a very short-sighted view of things and you, you shouldn't be thinking that. You shouldn't think, I need to steal because I can't make ends meet. No, man, you need to go improve your skills, go do something, and be better. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm a dude on the internet. I work a fucking 40 hour a week full time job and I I scrape by. I don't know what this is, but it's, it's this is me pantomiming scraping. I don't know. About June 1885 into 1886, Anna, Richard's mother, had started a romantic relationship with a David J. Corker, a local shop owner in town. I throw quotes on that because, well, you'll find out in a bit. On November 1st, 1886, David Corker was found hacked to death in his home and his store had been robbed. The sheriff, Thomas J. Harris, brought Richard in for questioning. A day after the murder, Thomas had spotted blood on Richard's coat, uh, which Richard had said was from butchering his hog. Thomas had gone and questioned Richard's wife, Julia, about the blood and she said that it came from one of the kids' injuries. To Thomas, that was enough to bring him in for questioning because, you know, you had a guy that was just killed hacked to death, killed brutally, and this guy just happens to have blood on his coat and his alibi doesn't match what his wife says. Okay, that's suspect. One big thing against Richard, though, was that he had a big mouth. He liked to run that shit all day long. Numerous times, Richard had been overheard saying how easy it would be to rob the store because David was actually deaf. Richard maintained his innocence throughout the entirety of the questioning and uh, trial leading up to, you know, the inevitable thing that happened. But this was dubious at best because his alibi continued to change. Uh, and details would be corrected among different series of questioning. When Richard's home was searched, it was found that he had burglar's tools, which placed him in a bad position as the back window had been forced open of the shop. Richard claimed that those tools were planted and that the real murderer was Sheriff Thomas J. Harris and that he was framing Richard to get away with his crime. All of this evidence would not have been enough to convict him had it not been for Richard's big mouth. During his trial, Richard didn't even try to hide how much he despised the people in the room, which combined with his expressed gross hatred towards David painted him in the light of a murderer. After the trial, after all of the questioning, he was found guilty and sentenced to hang for the murder of David J. Corker. On the day of his hanging, Richard was heard screaming, Murderer! You're all murderers! I'm innocent, and you will be proven to be guilty at the end of time. And he continued to scream that he was innocent the entire time leading up until the lever was pulled. Unfortunately, the noose was not done properly, and when it went taut, instead of breaking Richard's neck, which is what a noose is supposed to do so you don't just sit there and choke to death, it went up a little higher, right up around his, uh, I don't know what this would be, but right up here, and he ended up being strangled to death for 20 minutes. This was all public sentiment that this was gross negligence, this was too much, like he should have just been killed quick, until Richard's cellmate came forward and expressed that Richard was not innocent. He had told his cellmate, which I'll have his name posted up because I don't have it written down, stupid me. Um, he had told his cellmate that he had killed uh, two people prior to this. There was one lady, one French woman he murdered in Portland, 
Uh, you know, again, he just robbed her and stabbed her to death. And there was another woman in Oregon City that him and two other guys had attempted to rob. And I think one of the guys had caught her purse in the face and it broke his nose. And Richard ended up stabbing her to death and, you know, robbing her as well. Um, now, this could be the cellmate just saying some shit to get an easier sentence. I don't know if they discussed that with him or not. But if not, this would show Richard to almost be a serial killer. And if that's the case, good riddance. It's a good thing he was dead then. So with that, those are the legends and the facts surrounding the Lafayette Cemetery. Have you ever seen this cemetery? Have you ever been to a cemetery? Have you ever experienced a haunting? If you have, leave it in the comments below. I'd like to hear it. I'd like to, you know, maybe look it up if you have, you know, some kind of verification of like, oh, hey, this one place, blah, blah, blah. Chris, go look this up. I would totally love to do that. I think that'd be awesome. Um, but if you enjoyed the video, please let me know down below. Um, I'm trying to get back into the swing of YouTube by making these cool, more scripted, kind of feels off the cuff, but I'm cool with that kind of videos. Um, so yeah, this has been Technically Chris, and we just went over the Lafayette Pioneer Cemetery. Bye!